is Lois Wright Show once again. And uh, I have a guest that uh, was born in Hungary. And uh, she's gone from Hungary uh, to uh, actually Windmill Village doing very interesting things in between times. And it was quite a little while in, to do some things in between times. And uh, I even have a camera person on this show that came from Russia. So it's sort of like a little uh, UN, uh, a little UN film here going on. Of course, Barbara Hotchkiss Posen is here, and she's not. She's not from Russia or anywhere. Southampton, dr terrible drive over from Southampton with this awful traffic and everything. So uh, uh, I, I'm, I have to, I'll introduce my guest now. It's very rare that I have someone born in Hungary. So welcome to the guest, uh, I mean, welcome to the show. Did you see, I'm hungry, I can't get up. Judy Sleed. Yes, hello. And I'm glad to be here. Good, I'm delighted you're here. I've yes. never done a show like this before, so it should be very interesting. Now you've been writing, you, you write, and you uh, uh, have a musical background too, because you were in, in, uh, instructing with the piano and uh, yeah, all kinds of things, but uh, when did you leave Hungary? In 1945. But that's the, well, the war was going on, or the, well, the it war ended. was going It when, ended. When, when did it end, that Second World War? Oh my, in Budapest, it ended in 45 March. In March of 1945, it ended in Budapest. All right. Oh, that's, that's so interesting and exciting to hear. Uh, that's uh, a good title for a book or a film. It ended in Budapest, and, and, and that sounds like a, a good a title. Good title. Yeah, <laughs> so you, you ought to write about that. Well, I have been working on my life story for like forever. I just can't seem to get it uh, together. I had various different beginnings, and uh, I don't know, just too much. My whole life story would be like a very fat book. <laughs> and well, I would need a lot of time to do it. That's why we're talking here now, to cover between mm -hmm. leaving <coughs> Budapest, and I guess you were a child then, of course. Yes, so if I tell you how old I am, yeah. then you will know but how I'm old I am now. No, <laughs> then everybody will know, not right. just me. <laughs> well, so I was 14, actually, oh. at that time, I think. Well, uh, you, were, you were like a child, practically, just yes, a little older than a child, so to speak. Well, who'd mm. you leave with? Oh, I did, left all by myself. You did? Yes, I, because I wanted to leave that place because they were, they did me wrong. And they I never went. They did you wrong? Yes. How so well, did they do you wrong? Who I was you? persecuted. Oh. And I lost everything and everyone. You and were I, persecuted by the Nazis, I take it. Right. Well, that's terrible, but it's strange that you didn't leave sooner. Actually, you left after it was over. Yes. You think well, you would have left sooner before you got... Uh, uh, well, I was only a child, and I did as my mother would want it, and she somehow she believed that it's not going to touch us, the war. No. But uh, it did, and... Uh, as I said, I was left all alone so after the war. You what happened to your mother and father? Well, they perished. Oh, terrible. And uh, I joined uh, a Zionist organization, thinking that I will go to Israel. However, <coughs> in the midst of everything, I fell in love with a young man who uh, wanted to go to Brazil. And I thought if he goes to Brazil, to South America, and I will go to North America, I thought we'll be very close to each other. <laughs> like neighbors there, yes. neighbors, yes, my goodness. So I came here, and he went there, and he started calling, uh, not calling me, in corresponding that come here and live with me, and I said come here, and we just didn't go, and uh, so it all ended. But no, that's he, how he, I got here. He made the wrong choice then. He made the wrong choice going to South America and giving you up. 
wrong choice. He, uh, uh, so how nice sweet. He went there. <laughs> yes. So uh, 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 that's uh, you were here all by yourself. Then. Yeah, well, I was with relatives. They did send for me, and uh, I live with my uh, my father's sister and her family. Oh, your aunt? Yes, my aunt. Well, so uh, th that's how you learned English, I guess, was living with them? Yes, they put me in school. I was uh, almost 16 by then. I was six because I celebrated my sweet 16th party here in America. Where, in New York? Yes. City? Yes, my oh. aunt lived on the Lower East Side. Crowded down there, isn't it? Well, it's entirely different now. Oh, yes. it was crowded down there from pictures I've seen. Yes, Film crowded. clips and all. So they sent me to school with 12-year-old kids. Well, I guess they had to if you didn't speak the language. I and didn't. They weren't having classes or anything where... Well, I did go to night school, uh, English for foreign-born. English for foreign-born? Yes. Well, that's good. It's, uh, people yes. shouldn't learn English as soon as possible. Indeed, I did. Well, you have to be smart, though. You can't learn it. I tried to learn Spanish so I'd know what uh, people were saying in the IGA and everywhere. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I found it, uh, you know, I should have started earlier. I, uh, I didn't, it's too hard. So it's hard, in, that's a hard language to learn, isn't it, English? Considered hard? The pronunciation was very hard because, you know, the TH sound and the W sound, and most Hungarians <coughs> cannot learn that. They still say the W is a V. Oh, I know, I know. Yes. Yeah, like Wagner. Yes. <laughs> so uh, uh, that that's uh, so somehow you made your way there. What from from out of that sort of crowded place, the, the, the east side there? What did you call it? It was the Lower East the Side. The Lower East Side. You said yeah. the East Side, but the Lower East Side makes quite a difference. I yes. I wanted to make quite a difference between Lower East Side and East Side. Yes, there is. And you probably wanted to go out and get into a profession. Well, uh, I was, uh, for a long time, I was really heartbroken over that relationship that oh. didn't. But I... I I uh, ended up going to another relative, cousin Miriam, and she put me in school. <coughs> I learned a computer. In those days, that was the computer. Really? Yes. The computer? Computer. Never yes. heard of it. What do you know? Yes. That, they yes. must have been big ones. No, it was about this big. It was all numbers, and you you knew that. You did that because you always held a pencil over here when you were working, and uh, I was I learned you that didn't very learn well. Anything. You learned English. Yes. You learned English right away. You found your way here. You learned English. You probably mm. best you didn't marry that other man. That was probably good. And then right away you learned how to do these. What do you call them again? Comptometer. 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 Yes. Oh, and you, so you just are really amazing. The manufacturer was Felt and Tarrant, I remember that. Yeah. It's amazing the things I remember. <laughs> well, you've got a good memory bank. Yeah. Uh, then, so then you did that, you learned that right away like that. Then what did you do? Then I think I, I, I kept going to school to learn English and, and, and the accounting uh, I was very interested in, so then I went to work. As a, well, actually, as a computer operator, and different, and I did accounting also, like uh, whatever, and uh, and then I got married after you a while. You did? Yes. Like, oh, that's uh, yeah, well. Uh, you did. So who did you marry? Did you marry a man named Sleed? Yes, I did. I did. Oh, that's His where first that name, name is <laughs> Joel. Yes. Joel Sleed. That's where your that's what yes. kind of name is that? Sleed. Well, that's uh, a cutoff from Sledovka. Oh, that's Russian then, right? Yes, it is. Oh. He's, I mean, he was born here because I thought that all foreign boards, the borns, they thought that if they marry an American, then they, you know, they belong. You step into the... Oh, well, I forgot about being a citizen and all that sort of thing. 
I oh, yes, out even all. before I was married, I took out my oh, citizenship well, you, paper. You so did. I'm twice the citizen. Well, yes, that's right. Well, you didn't, so you just must have liked his sleeve. Well, uh, what, yeah, what is your name? What is your family name, your fa mother, fa mother, father's name? Well, the English pronunciation is Weinberger. Weinberger. Yes. You, I can't, you, you're saying it's, no, you, it's impossible to pronounce the non-English version. Well, oh. you, in, hung, in Hungary, it was Weinberger. That sounds good, Weinberger. I thought that sounds <laughs> Weinberger, well, well. So, uh, did you ever yes. feel like going back to Budapest? Do you ever feel like it? it it's such, I've well, heard late, such a beautiful place. Lately, I've been asked to go, my cousin Claire, who, <clears throat> who brought, he was the first person I have seen when I got off the boat. Oh. <laughs> she wants to she go back with me. She was there. That was yes. nice, wasn't it? She was right there when you got off the boat, Claire. Yes, yes. Well, she was certainly a good person because it must be hard to, to find and the right boat. And she said she was so scared. She came and she called my name, Zhuzhi. That was my Hungarian name. Zhuzhi. Well, that's not Judy. That's, that's a whole different story. That's my middle name. Zuzi is Suzanne. Oh. So, anyway, she wants to go back with me, and I would love, but somehow I could never find time. I didn't want to take time off from well, I whatever didn't, you know, I, I didn't was mean doing. Soon, you know, I didn't mean soon, because you have to, I mean now in the last few years, say, uh, you know, recent, the more recent. Well, someday I like hope it. I'll live long enough to go back. No, I don't see that. I hear that the building where I was growing up is no longer there. Oh. They tore it down. Well, I wonder, I just have read all the time that Budapest is such a beautiful place. It is. And so it's cultured, so much culture there. There is. Well, well. There is. So then you turned your attention, you did turn your attention to writing. Oh, I was writing i loved writing ever since i was a child i ever since i'm eight years old i'm always saying uh -huh. i've been writing all the time and uh, when i'm writing i feel like i'm in a different space and a lot of times when i read what i ha had written i can't believe that it, it came, came out of you? yes 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 Wow, and then I read it, and I said, "Isn't that amazing?" <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. You're you're a good critic for yourself, and you'll deserve compliments <laughs> like to yourself when you do when it pleases you, and you know it's good. Yes, of course. A lot of times I feel it needs some <coughs> rewriting, and then I do it. Um, but lately, I haven't done much writing. Well, now you have such drama in your life. You have yeah. these serious matters and drama. And yet, on the other hand, you've got this little book published called The Fight of the Crayons. And The Fight of the Crayons, after being bothered in Budapest by Nazis and Nazis and, and drama and tragedy and uh, difficulties, and then you write a book about The Fight of the Crayons. So yes. th that must be your sense of humor, and uh, because uh, somehow or other you're taking all this drama out in a, in a little children's book. Well, I do have a <coughs> sense of humor. Uh, when I first started to write my life story, it was on the light, light side, and everybody says, people love horror stories, that you should make it dramatic and put all the bad stuff, and you know, and, and I, I just can't do it that way. So I have a lot of different versions how it came out. But this, the idea came to me when uh, my chair, I took my children to the uh, library and they only wanted to take books that had a lot of colors on, on it, in the book. In the book, yeah. Yeah, and that's how I said, well, what could have be more colorful than crayons? Nothing for a child. So, yeah, so that's how I came to write this well, book. can you buy this book anywhere? Unfortunately oh. not. Oh, also, oh. the back of the book, I always forget the writer's the back of the book, I did that with the uh, author uh, Zosin. So this is uh, Judy when she was, uh, I guess, where were you then? In New York? In New York that? City, so what yes. What were you doing when this beautiful picture was taken? What was I doing? What were I you was, doing? Um, I worked in a beauty salon boutique oh. in the Sheraton Center. 
Tommy DeMeo salon. The Sheraton Hotel? Yeah, but now he, they moved to the Marriott Marquis Hotel. Oh. I was working there for a long time. <laughs> oh, that was nice. As that was a, a sophistication, a sophisticated place. I'm not a hairdresser, but no. I used to do many, everything else. I would do manicures, wash hair, and I was behind the desk selling clothes. Uh, I was like the manager for uh, many years, and oh. that's what I was doing when this happened. And Tommy DiMeo, he made me a book party when it was done. Oh. He had a friend in the Lombardi Hotel, and he the invited what hotel? Lombardi. So, I don't, Lombardi that's a, hotel? Yes, it's around 56th Street on the east side. Yeah. And uh, and a lot of people came, and I I was supposed to charge everybody for the book, but I just gave them away. Oh my goodness! <laughs> You're supposed to sign them, and then I they, did. Then sign they're it. supposed to pay somebody. Well, I didn't take any money. That's I'm very right. generous. Oh, well, now you see, that's that. That's that uh, 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 European idea, I guess, you know. Yeah, Americans, mon somehow Americans money. are very quick to get the money. They're not the least bit embarrassed. I know to that. To ask for money. <laughs> and, uh, but somehow money that, just uh, embarrasses me. <laughs> well, you, you, gotta, you have to learn to ask for money, but, you know, sometimes uh, people that come from the South uh, in this country, for generations, they didn't like to ask for money. It's it's more of a northern attitude. Is it? Yes. In this country, I'm talking about. Yes. That's what my mother said and father said. Well, anyway, uh, so now you're all much later on. You're. What happened to Mr. Swede? Ah, uh, we got a divorce. Oh, so he's out of the picture. Uh, more or less, yeah, he remarried. And you have any children? I have three beautiful children. Oh. And four beautiful grandchildren. Oh, how wonderful. Now, they might want to <laughs> go back and see Budapest. I bet you tell them uh, stories of Budapest when you were a child, oh, they before the trouble started. They're very anxious to read my life story. Oh, I should think so. They're very anxious. and. Someday, maybe I'll just sit down and finish the book. You have the time and the serenity now at Windmill Village. So oh, sit down. I this love is a Windmill, Windmill Village. A Windmill oh, do Village I love it there. Residence. Yes. And it has serenity. It has. And it you gives me security. And security. You're very, you yes. feel safe, very yes. safe, very comfortable. Yes. Very. Very. And so this would be the idea. That's a blessing. I count that a blessing to, it is. to live there. It's a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. I live there too. It's a wonderful place. Now, yes. uh, uh, in fact, th this uh, uh, East End Community Organic Farm and Gardens have decided to uh, to put a garden there on the other side, the way the, the, the further side from where you live. Yes. Up the other end there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if anybody's uh, interested in helping it, it's a not-for-profit volunteer-run organization. It's called the, uh, it's at, uh, they're doing this at the East End Community Organic Farm and Gardens, which I, I imagine been in the newspapers in Nome. They did a beautiful job. Have you been down there and looked at it? Um, you have to go I past must have, the yeah. office, go down yes. further. Oh, as a matter of fact, yes, they had a, a, a luncheon a couple they of days ago. They had a wonderful ago. luncheon. It was like a, a society uh, affair there. They had a they yes, had the yellow and white striped tent, and they they had it, it was catered. It was wonderful, and all the food was very healthy. Oh yeah, and delicious. Well, they want you to get interested in organic farming. Well, that's a very good cause. I'm all for it. Oh, mm -hmm. we, we, I wanted to mention mention that. So now you'll be able, where, where, where are your children? Well, t my two daughters live upstate New York in Kingston area, and my son lives in Texas. Oh, he's, he's Texan. Is your grandchildren, does he have children? Yeah, he just, he's a, a wonderful, adorable three-year-old son, and then he just had a, a little girl, the first little girl. Little girl? Yes. Oh. She's about three months old now. Oh, you must and be he, happy as a lark. And he was just up to visit 
Well, he came on a job. He went, uh, the Bel Belmont uh, racetrack had a big race. Yes. He, he works for NBC TV oh, with Bob mm -hmm. Costas. Oh, I so he Bob came. Costas, yeah. So they, <coughs> the wife came with the baby, so I spent my time babysitting. It was wonderful. In Village or someplace? No, no, in New York. In New York. In New York. Yeah, you come all the way out to no, no, Village. No, no. No, he had to work in Garden City, and she stayed in New York with the baby well, with what me. Is, is, uh, what what, uh, is, what uh, network is he with now, or has he gotten and out of that? No, NBC. He's still with NBC. Oh, yes, oh, NBC. Oh. So they were filming the, ra the, uh, the, ra the races there. Yes. And I thought he'd gone there to gamble, but that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, much better that he was working on the. Well, he's film. been doing sports ever since he's a little kid, and he oh. had all the jobs. Every job he had was with sports. Hmm. He worked for News 12 Long Island. He, he worked for WFAN. He and K something in in uh, St. Louis. Miss St. Louis, but that's all he did. He's been doing sports. Well, they must, he must be well known around here. What's his name again? Jeff Sleed. Jeff Sleed. Sleed, the Sleed Gang. The Sleed <laughs> Gang, yeah, <laughs> Jeff Sleed. Well, everybody must know yeah. him. Yes, well, no, and uh, uh, my husband, uh, ex-husband, he's a journalist, but he retired. He wrote for the uh, Long Island Press, Travel. He did a travel column, and then when the press uh, went out of business, then he went to the Star Ledger. Oh. By the way, do you have a car? You have a car, don't you? Yes. Did you have trouble getting here through this awful traffic? Well, With the it, work that they're doing, they're tearing up the Main Street and blocked off Newtown Lane for a while yesterday. And well, it takes terrible. a lot longer. When I met you yesterday in the uh, complex in Windmill, and as you know, I was in a hurry to leave to go to the dentist. Yes. I never got there because it was because of the traffic. I lost so much time. I called them up, and they told me if I'm going to be late, don't come. Oh, so. I hope that was partly my fault because I was talking. Well, I asked you to be on well, the Well, I think I would have. <laughs> I, I would have been know, late anyway. I didn't know what we were going to talk about, except yes. I asked you when you where you were born, and you said. Well, how did you know it was me? You confronted me. I said, "Are you Judy Sleet?" Well, <laughs> I don't know. It was instinct. Instinct, yes. I don't That's know. That's wonderful. I, I don't know how I did that, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad I did. Well, me too. I'm yeah. very glad. So uh, the Mr. So Dennis appointment because of that uproar going on and yes. on the work going on, the yes. repaving and probably putting uh -huh. wires down and things. Right. I mean, it's just really very bad. I don't know who is responsible for this. is a busy season, and I don't know how people are going to get around. But I'm, from now on, I know I have to give myself an extra half an hour for wherever did I they, go. Did they make another appointment for you? I have to call back. How far did you get? You didn't get far at all? Or Bridgehampton. Where? You got, Bridgehampton. You got all the way to Bridgehampton? Yeah. Oh, you really tried. <laughs> yes, and I said, well, this is useless, because last time I was like 10 minutes late, and I had, uh, had to wait two hours before they uh, took me, so I figured I don't want to waste two oh, hours no. sitting there. Well, as long as you didn't have a toothache. No. As long as you didn't have a toothache, it's all no. right. No. Just maintenance work. Yeah, it was just an adjustment. Well, here now, I've got yeah. maintenance on my mind now. A maintenance but, work, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Well, uh, how'd you, so. you, 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 was a, it's a terrible, it, it's, uh, I just couldn't believe my eyes when I drove through East Hampton, the Main Street today. And they, uh, they're making you uh, go down different roads and the, the businesses are suffering. Oh, the they are. They probably the, are. This mm -hmm. is the same as the height of the season. I mean, it, it, June is like July and August. It, it, some people mm -hmm. don't even want to come here in June and all, in July and August. So you could even have more people. You could have yeah. a tremendous amount of people here in June because they're the ones that don't want to come in July and August because it's too crowded because. But they will come anyway. <laughs> yeah, they have homes here, so they, uh, they want to come and spend time in the Hamptons. It's very fashionable. I know, I know. <laughs> too fashionable. Yeah. I consider it much too fashionable. Mm -hmm. What's this? 
open I the book? Had, um, well, well, you, these are illustrations uh, in the book that mm -hmm. have to, the children have to color. It's, yeah, it was colored. put out as a coloring because it's cheaper uh, to publish it that way. But you wrote what's on the side. And yellow, yeah. I'm just looking at this. Yeah. Yellow crayon, crayon shouted. I am yellow. I make the daisy bright. I color the corn. I help the moon to shine. I am the prettiest. Oh, they're in competition. Exactly. One, one crayon with the other thinks that their color's the best. Yes. Oh, that has a lot of philosophy and a uh, food for thought. Oh, you are a very... His observing person. Brown crayon <laughs> I am yeah. brown. I can make a horse brown. I color the trunks of trees. I color the mountains best. I am the prettiest. I don't know how the book is going to end here. You don't. No. It's very exciting. Well, I should say. Look at that. That's a very good book. What do you Thank know? you very you much. You want to read one section, one oh. of them. Well, Green Crayon shouted, I am green. I help change winter to spring. I color the grass and trees. The inchworm looks best in my color. I am the prettiest. That's right. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're the best, they're the smartest, they're the this, the different. Mm. But my favorite, different my favorite, my favorite. So you want to see my favorite page? Yes, I do. I was on the uh, Joe Franklin show many years oh, ago. Oh, yes. Promoting this book and mm. this one. And all the children cried. Look at these sad faces. Okay, can you see it? It's over that this camera, I believe. This one? Yes, I can. And all the children cried. I don't know why, but I like that. The you best. like that? Well, you... you uh, yes. <coughs> but I like the whole book. I, I'm not prejudiced, but I well, like this, the whole book. this goes back to uh, uh, oh. Budapest. Yeah. Uh, looked at colors, and of course the crayons were sad when they saw what their silly fighting had done to the flowers and the birds and the sun, and that that would be all the lovely people and their spirits and soul. I'm saying that, and all the other yeah. things that had once been beautiful, and all. Well, of course you like that. You equate with this so well. So yeah. I have to wind it up. See, look at that. Immediately, I have to wind up. Uh, Judy Sleed, I want to thank you very much. We'll well, be in. And where can you get this book? It was my pleasure. Well, maybe if you could find a... I have a few copies at home. Oh, all right, but I, and I want to thank... I always thank the, the crew. I want to thank Barbara Hoskins mm -hmm. Posner, Betty D. Fox, who's directing, Stefan Kalnowalski didn't show up, Peter Rywelski helped, and Nick Letcher, and uh, and then we had this uh, Maria Kimazda. Kimaz, from here you pronounce that. Oh That's my gosh, name. Kimadza. I'm si I'm right. Is that here. right? I can't get over that. Kimadza. Between a Russian and a Hungarian at the United Nations here. We'll have to get together sometime.